Hello and welcome to the Analyst Corner offered to you by 101 Blockchains. I am Enrico Camerinelli, VP of Research. This Analyst Corner is about what is distributed ledger technology. A distributed ledger is a network in which data is shared or spread among peer nodes to accomplish a specific task, like to avoid loss of data, to increase processing power or bandwidth, or to create a global ledger. In this type of structure, there is no implicitly, no central authority or server to broadcast the rec records to every node or client. Every node independently keeps updated its own ledger or database. To ensure that all ledgers are synchronized so that all nodes have the same source of truth, each node in the network must share their own ledger and reach a common consensus to decide the final truth ledger. This will constitute the distributed and decentralized ledger. The usual acronym used for distributed ledger technology is DLT. The consensus mechanism differs from distributed ledger to distributed ledger, and each consensus mechanism is peculiar to specific business needs. Consensus mechanisms remove the need for a central authority to ensure trust between transacting nodes. It is sufficient that nodes agree among themselves on what is the data that must be included in the shared database or ledger. Each node will keep having its own ledger, which will be the same across all the network nodes. The term DLT is one kind of umbrella term that covers the technologies where the ledger system is distributed among network nodes. Blockchain is one kind of DLT implementation with a peculiar and unique data structure. But people often use these terms interchangeably, which led the whole misconception that DLT is another name for blockchain. Rather than fixating on the subtle difference between DLT and blockchain, it's much more productive to understand each technology's characteristics and find which will best resolve the needs of an enterprise. Blockchain is one of the most popular types of DLTs. Blockchain is a type of DLT where transaction records are kept in the ledger as a chain of blocks, digitally signed and cryptographically concatenated. A second type of DLTs are hash graphs. This non-blockchain distributed ledger system uses a gossip protocol. Each network, send, each network node sends out information known as event on a new transaction. Once a node initiates a transaction, it will randomly choose a neighboring node and relay that information. The receiving node will then aggregate its own event with events received by gossip and then relay it out to another random neighboring node. Once a transaction takes place, the neighboring nodes share that information with other nodes and after some time all the nodes will know about the transaction. With the help of the virtual voting protocol, if two-thirds of the network nodes agree with the transaction, then it's considered valid. The process is quite rapid for everyone on the network to know about the event. The DLT is useful for enterprises that need high-speed transactions. DAG, DAG, is another non-blockchain DLT. One of the major characteristics of DAG are free, fee-less nanotransactions by which the scalability of the system improves as the network grows. The more transactions run on the network, the faster they will be settled. Any node can initiate a transaction. To have it validated, the node must first verify at least two previous transactions received. In essence, the more a node validates the transactions it has received, the more its own transactions become valid transactions on the distributed ledger. Furthermore, DAG comes with a signature scheme that is quantum computing proof. This DLT is useful for enterprises that run high speed and high volume transactions. Then we have Allochain, another non-blockchain DLT. What makes this DLT peculiar from other non-blockchain DLTs is that Allochain does not use any global consensus protocol. In consensus-based DLTs, nodes must reach, must reach a global consensus and validate transactions across the entire network. Allochain changes this mechanism. The process takes inspiration from a hologram, which constitutes the root name of this DLT. To create a 3D pattern in a hologram, you'll need specific light beams and have them interact in a way to create the image. Holochain is similar. It uses individual modules to create the whole ledger system. 
Here, every node keeps its own ledger and communicates using its own unique signature. Think of the whole network as a river. Every node is feeding into the river of ledgers through their small streams, which creates the, the river as a whole. If one stream is interrupted, for instance, the node goes offline, the distributed ledger database, that is the river, won't be affected. Every node in our chain will have its own very ledger identified by a specific set of value, values called the DNA. When a node sends a transaction to another node, this one verifies this transaction with the issuing node's DNA. If validated, then the transaction is relayed to the other nodes in the network who will also validate the DNA before accepting the transaction as valid. A transaction with an invalid DNA, for instance, a malicious transaction, will be rejected and broadcast across the network, warning other nodes of this malicious attempt. Holochain is also defined as agent-centric system. Each node or agent maintains its own history log and shares independently without having to wait for any consensus. Tempo is specifically designed to work on mobile devices. The global ledger on the network will be chopped into smaller subsets of that ledger. These smaller parts are called shards. Every shard comes with its own unique identification code and is distributed among the nodes. This is a benefit because nodes aren't required to carry the full burden of the global ledger, thus increasing scalability. If in a shard, the first transaction was A and now a new transaction B happened, the other nodes will check whether there was a transaction A before B. So here, nodes will validate and record the event based on the sequence rather than when that event occurred. Let's highlight the key characteristics of the listed DLTs. Blockchain deserves a note of, men of mention for the immutability of its ledger. DAG's distinctive nature in its ex extreme scalability and quantum resistance. Hashgraph's random gossip avoids malicious attempts to influence other nodes and make them invalidate or change a transaction. Once a node becomes aware of a transaction, it's too late to change it. With Allochain, uh, the agent-centric structure, everyone runs their own, their own ledger on their devices, and when needed, they can communicate with the main ledger using their private key. Here, every node works as a separate entity and, in the end, forms a whole new functioning unit. Tempo's sharding mechanism splits the ledger into pieces of a puzzle. Once put together, they will reveal the whole picture. The puzzle pieces are the shards, and the result is the globally distributed ledger. In conclusion, DLTs face inevitable challenges that must be resolved. Distributed ledger technology must be reinforced with regulatory guidelines and standards to provide protection for the assets exchanged on the network. Mass utilization is another limiting factor that can be resolved only through persistent information, marketing, and solid use cases. Distributed ledger technology is still considered to be immature and needs more applications to consolidate. Data protection and network security are two other major drawbacks that DLTs must overcome. So, again, in conclusion, internet has changed our lifestyle, and with DLT, we will be able to have greater control over it. With DLTs, it will be less about collecting information and more about how to utilize that information to build intelligence for economic growth. This concludes the analyst corner offered to you by 1-1 Blockchains. I am Enrico Camerinelli, VP of Research.